early in the war, so in 65 and 66, the North Vietnamese prime minister is claiming that there are no North Vietnamese troops in South Vietnam of or making not. their way to South Vietnam, right? Of course not. They're they're all they're all north of DMZ doing their thing. And uh obviously that wasn't the case. <laughs> <laughs> so higher command, US higher command, they they, they want to find out what's going on. So they they tap this guy uh, his name is Dick Meadows. They give him the tap on the shoulder. They're like, hey, we want you to take your recon team, recon team Iowa, All right. out to the Ho Chi Minh Trail and observe it. See if you can get some pictures or some video footage of, of NVA soldiers using it so we can build kind of plans around that and how we want to, you know, how we want to stop, you know, stop these, this, this, these troop movements to the, to deep South Vietnam. And, uh. They chose the right guy. Dick Meadows, just to give you kind of a rundown of Dick Meadows, um, first and foremost, this should tell you everything you need to know about Dick Meadows. Dick Meadows is the only Green Beret in the history of all Green Berets to include Francis Marion, the Swamp Fox, right? So all of them. Uh, he's the only one that has a statue on Fort Bragg. No kidding. The only one. How epic is that? I mean, there's some epic Green Berets, but... Yeah, that's epic, yeah. right? Dick Meadows is is a, in a class by himself. And just to give you a rundown of this guy, uh, in 1947, he lied about his age so he could join the army. He was 15 when he joined. Wow. He becomes a 15 year old paratrooper back when paratroopers were still kind of special forces. You know, this is mm. Korea time frame just after World War II. So, yep, yep. You know, you, you got to think Band of Brothers essentially, right? They're, yeah, they were that, like that's that close to that era group. Yeah. He fights so bravely and it conducts himself at such a level in, in the Korean War that he becomes the youngest master sergeant in the war, and he will be a master sergeant at age 20. 20? Master sergeant. Dude, dude. Tr- usually. Could you imagine if you had a 20-year-old master sergeant? <laughs> no. And you had him because. With combat action. Yeah, because not because he's like some general's son or something, but because he's a badass. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what All I mean? Like 20 years own. old. That's savage, dude. Usually savage. Yeah, guys like that, they usually find him after a little while. And they, you know, they give him a little s- smack on the wrist or something or like, hey, man, you shouldn't have done that. But uh, but we need you here. We appreciate you being here. Uh, but this guy seems like, well, maybe that did happen to him, but it seems like he's at 20 too- years old by a master sergeant. He's, he's too good. He's too good to be dealing with that crap. So, um, needless to say, man, this guy's been involved in everything. You know, uh, beyond beyond the Korean War and beyond SOG, um, he's going to assist in the creation of Delta Force. He's going to participate in the drug wars. He'll have a forty five year uh, military or have a forty five year military career. Whoa. So most guys are if if you do a career, that's twenty, right? He's yeah. doing more than two, <laughs> right? More than two, <laughs> two life sentences. I uh, just and, and and probably loving every minute yeah. of it. To this guy, just seemed like he loved this job. But I I I I, I digress. In 66, RT Iowa and Dick Meadows head out on this recon op. And they make their way to the Ho Chi Minh Trail. They get in position. And keep in mind, man, these guys, you know, you, you, when, I, when we talk about triple, triple canopy jungle, it is thick. It's thick jungle, right? So there's oftentimes I wouldn't be able to see me, like I wouldn't be able to see from me to you, right? If you were standing yeah. there, there's so much shrub and brush, I might not even see you. So right. you got to be really close the Ho Chi Minh Trail to be able to see what's going on, especially if you want to take pictures. Yeah. Well, um, they get in position. They're right next to the road, and sure enough, NVA soldiers and porters are marching south on the on on Highway 110, heading straight for Cambodia and then into South Vietnam. And uh, Dick Meadows laying there. He pulls out a camera, snaps an entire roll of pictures of this. Right. He he's just taking pictures one after another as these guys are marching by. Well, he decides that's not enough, and he pulls out a motion picture camera. What? Right? A motion picture camera gets even closer to the road, and I've seen stills. I believe I've seen stills of this. It's hard to tell if the the stills that I saw are actually taken from Dick Meadows' um, film or not. Mm. Uh, there's a few other times that there'll be pictures taken by SOG guys of the Ho Chi Minh Trail and troops, you know, NBA troops moving along it. Um, but from where I, where I found it, I found it on a uh, Mac V Sog website. I'm pretty confident that it's Dick Meadows, um, you know, pictures from his video, and it's unbelievable. He is actually like out on the trail, like, 
Poop pick, peeked out from the bush out on the trail, and he's filming the backs of these guys. And you can see a whole line of NBA troops walking. Dude, they got their pith helmets on, doing their thing. It's totally wild. And he's just right behind them with a video camera filming. He ends up filming an entire battalion worth of NVA soldiers moving along this along the Ho Chi Minh Trail. No idea he's there. Crazy, crazy. Keep in mind, he's got six guys. An NVA battalion, a thousand guys. Six guys, a thousand guys. So if something goes wrong, not only is he deep into Laos, no one's getting there quick. Right. He's not like he can have a, a QRF, a quick reaction, or a quick reaction force come out of the fob and come save the day. You know what I mean? Like he's a long way from home. If they get into a gunfight, they're severely outnumbered, and uh, and and it's not going to be good. It's right. not going to be pretty. I mean, there's 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 very there's very little hope of getting out of that situation. And here he is stepping out onto the Ho Chi Minh Trail to film. Better be a quiet camera. <laughs> Telling me, man, Dick Meadows proves the prime minister was lying. He proves that there are there are North Vietnamese troops moving to South Vietnam. Wow. This allows SOG and U.S. High Command to approve and conduct even more operations cross-border into Laos and Cambodia. Yeah, good. Um, now, a few months after this, RT Iowa and Dick Meadows um, are going to be conducting a reconnaissance mission again in Laos. This time, they're going to stumble upon an NVA cache, uh, a weapons cache, and they discover Russian-made artillery pieces in this cache. Of course. Now, Dick Meadows obviously knows, I can't take these with me. He doesn't have the he doesn't have the proper uh, explosives to be able to destroy the guns outright, like the barrels and everything. So mm. what he does, he takes pictures of all the guns and then he steals all the sights off the guns. Nah, right? Nice. It just takes them. Now right, you can have your gun, but you can't. You won't be able to aim it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, now I bring that up because this is kind of this is kind of interesting. He gets back from that op, and on both missions, this one and the last one. He will be. Uh, he will personally debrief General William Westmoreland. Really, he's like yes. the the guy. He's like he's the overall commander, right? Of well, at this point in the war, he is the overall commander of Mac V Sog. Okay. Now later in the war, he will become uh, the overall commander of U.S. forces. Okay. At this point in time, though, he's he's the commander of Mac V Sog. Gotcha. And he's just so impressed with Dick Meadows, and. Uh, on this specific occasion, because now this is twice this dude has done just the unbelievable for him, right? And yeah. Meadows has come back with just awesome intel both times. Yeah. So uh, so Dick Meadows decides, all right, well, I'm going to give you a souvenir, sir. And he gives him one of those Russian sites, one of those Russian artillery no sites kidding. that he had taken from the guns. You can't and get this anywhere else no, in the world. No, this is legit. This but is, from me. <laughs> this is from the NBA cachet. This this one and only right here for you. And yeah, uh very cool. And and Westmoreland is so like giddy and excited about all this and, and, and like he it's like he's got his favorite operator. Like you just my man, you know what I mean? Um he uh he gives uh Dick Meadows a, a battlefield commission on the spot. Not only does he give him a battlefield commission, but he gives a commission. He gives him a commission straight to captain. So he skips second and first lieutenant. What? Straight to captain. I've never heard of anything like yeah. that in my life. Yeah, <laughs> you that, know what I mean. Like it's a lot of, you, wow. you get a you get a battlefield commission. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, they they don't give those out, especially by this point. They're not giving those out that often. Right. Right. But to get one directly to captain, you know you're hard. You know you're hard. Yeah. Um, now that's that's a very brief description of a recon mission and and two missions that went well right he didn't get any contact with with enemy fighters yeah um you know not not a whole nothing went wrong everything was good that's not always the case with these missions yeah, a lot of, makes it sound easy yeah uh, yeah uh, you know a lot of the times if they would get compromised because you know they might bump into an nva patrol there's also trackers right track uh, nva trackers they call them hunter killer teams these these counter recon teams that were designed to find these guys as soon as they inserted and then yeah. follow their trail and they would never stop hunting i mean they would just continue hunting and hunting and hunting so um so although these were successful just keep in mind move, moving forward that's not always the case right so you have a lot of guys that they get out there and within a few minutes of being on the ground they're in a terrible engagement with the enemy and they're heavily outnumbered and they have to fight for hours until they can manage to, to get extracted if at all you know if they're able to at all yeah, there's a counter for every punch, man. Yeah. 